nice one. <laughs> Ed Pratt, who set a new record by riding a unicycle 22,000 miles around the world. Ed started a YouTube channel in 2014 to chronicle his efforts to circle the globe on a unicycle. Ed was just 19 years old when he set out from his hometown in Somerset, England, before crossing Europe, then Kazakhstan, China, Asia, Australia, New Zealand, USA, then back to England. I got to ask Ed various questions, but the main question I was dying to ask was, why a unicycle? I know lots of people ride normal bikes cross country all over the world, but why unicycle around the world? Ed said he learned to ride unicycles when he was 17, and it became a bit of an obsession. Initially, just seeing how long he could stay on and balance for. But once he became experienced in riding, it turned into how far he could physically ride for. Ed was aware of other unicycle riders who carry camping gear and go for month long rides, so he wanted to give it a go also. Ed thought no one had ever ridden a unicycle around the world before, so in his words, he thought he'd give it a shot and become the first. Now I did some Google searches on the topic, unicycle around the world, and I found a reference to wobbling Wally Watts who unicycled 12,000 miles around the world in 1978. But as you can imagine, there's not much online about it, and it does not come up in a basic search for the world first unicycle around the world. So it's fair to say, Ed thought he would be the first, as I did in my initial searches, but Ed did ride further. The biggest hurdle Ed initially had to overcome was how to carry everything he would need. He started by having two custom panniers and framework made to attach to his unicycle, which he would store all of his gear in. But he had to be selective in what gear he stored on the bike, as he had limited space. But he did manage to pack a tent, sleeping bag, inflatable sleeping pad, cooking stove and fuel, a camera, three lenses and a tripod, laptop, storage hard drives, extra clothes, bike tools, and on certain parts of the journey, up to 10 kilograms of food and water. The unicycle and all the gear could weigh as much as 40 kilograms with everything packed on it. Now even though every leg of the journey had its own unique challenges, one of the biggest was getting enough water. The most concerned Ed was about water was in Kazakhstan, where he took a shortcut down a track while riding north and didn't see anyone for three days. Luckily the weather was cold at the time, so he didn't sweat much. Now personally, I would have thought running across the Nullarbor Plain in Australia would have been a bigger challenge, but he said Australia was not much of an issue for water, with a constant flow of traffic and truck stops every 150 kilometers or so, replacing empty bottles of water was fairly easy. When Ed arrived in Australia, he landed in Perth, and in case you're not aware, Perth is one of the most remote cities in the world. To ride across Australia from Perth to Adelaide, which is the next major city in Australia, there is only one main road called the Erie Highway, which crosses the Nullarbor Plain, and is Australia's longest straight road of 146 kilometres. There are truck stops along the way every 150 kilometers or so, where you can buy food, drink and fuel, but that's about it. There is pretty much nothing else to see or do for 2700 kilometers. What makes this stretch of road even worse is, there is no mobile phone coverage, so that means you had no way of contacting anyone in case of an emergency. Ed said, while riding across the Nullarbor, he went 20 days without mobile phone contact. Even the truck stops along the way had no service either. Trust me, driving across this part of Australia is no picnic. So the fact he unicycled across Australia from Perth to Sydney, which is almost 4,000 kilometers of the most remote and sparsely populated stretch of road in Australia is quite an achievement. The total time it took Ed to ride from Perth to Sydney was 89 days, which is fortunate as he only had a 90 day visa. I asked Ed, what was the biggest challenge of the whole ride? He said, expecting that the ride was going to take longer than expected, embracing that fact and not getting discouraged. I initially thought the trip would take two years. It ended up taking three years and four months, covering a total of 22,000 miles. 
Now, if riding a unicycle around the world at 19 years of age was not enough, Ed also wanted to do it for charity. After completing his journey around the world, he raised $400,000 for the School in a Bag charity, which buys school equipment for disadvantaged children. So after almost three and a half years, 22,000 miles of riding, $400,000 raised for charity, and a new record for distance traveled around the world on a unicycle, Ed crossed the finish line back at the starting point in his hometown to a cheering crowd of 500 people, all with a successful dismount off his unicycle to top it off, which he said he was worried about. I could never imagine riding around the world. For someone to have a dream that big and do it at the age of 19 is so amazing and very inspirational. But once you have achieved something so big at such a young age, where do you go from there? Well, I guess you'll need to watch his videos to find out. Because if nothing else, this is a person worth watching. Anyway, that's the end of this video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.